Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh, you want to see that? All right. Yeah, let's see that again. Ah, one more time. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to the first epic tutorial. It's my new show that I'm going to release a tutorial for every single Tuesday. What? Every Tuesday? Hopefully. I'm going to try it. I hope that seems like a good reason to subscribe every Tuesday. Anyway, this effect is done entirely in After Effects with only three stock footage elements that you need. These two files come from Video Copilot's Action Essentials pack, and this one I got off of Google. Google Images. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. Let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and try to quickly break down the effect that we're trying to make here. Essentially, this actor, which is myself, comes flying from off screen and then hits the wall. Blood goes splattering everywhere. I fall down and leave this nasty blood smear on the wall, you know average day in the life. But what is it that's going on? Essentially, there's this freeze frame here that I'm animating from off screen to on screen, and then it'll essentially cut to me, to this clip of me jumping up against the wall and then uh, falling down, which I made slightly quicker than real time, so it looks like it is a little bit more hectic. And then obviously uh, there's a mat, which is essentially just a cutout of me on top of myself so that I can put these blood layers in between it to make it look like I'm on top of the blood versus the blood being on top of me. That is the most time consuming part of this entire effect, is essentially just going through frame by frame and then cutting your actor out. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a clean plate. Before you even get into post, if you don't have a clean plate, you're not going to get anywhere. So what's important about a clean plate is that it's clean, it's empty, there are no effects on it, there's nothing here, and so you can bring out your regular footage, such as mine, and you'll see that the lighting changes quite a bit. I don't know why I walked over there with a reflector. But essentially, let's see if I can find a where I jump up against the wall. Right there. I'll go ahead and disable the sound. So as you can see, I just jump up against the wall here, and then I fall down. So if I can just time it so that I hit the wall right here. Say right that. If I deselect all my footage and I hit the star on my number keypad, it'll leave a marker here, and that way I know that at this precise moment in time, I hit the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and go forward a couple seconds, or actually backwards a couple seconds, and bring in my in point. Then I'll go here to the end and then bring in my out point. This is essentially your preview region. This is your working region here that you can trim. So I'm going to right click and then trim comp to work area. Actually, I'm going to extend this back a little bit more. And then trim comp to work area. And this will essentially just kind of neglect all the other part of your footage that you don't need at all. So I jump up into the wall here. So I'm going to select our clip here and I'm going to split it. I would normally split it with a keyboard shortcut, but that would mess up my uh, screen capture. So if I go up to edit and then go down to split layer, it's normally control shift D. And that'll split it into two separate layers that you can, you know, say turn off this part, so all of a sudden, bam, I fall down. And this is key because we want to keep the footage of this part, but this one, this footage here, we're just going to make it into a freeze frame. So if I go from, say, like this point right here, I select our footage, I right click, and then I go up to time and freeze frame. This will freeze it in time, so no matter where I am, it'll just be frozen. And that's very handy because we're going to mask them out and then, you know, just kind of move them around. So to mask this, you can go ahead and use your masking tool and just, you know, cut out your actor. Or you can use the roto brush. It doesn't really matter. They both get the job done. But I will just continue on and do it here. It's just for a single frame, so it's not too big of a deal. It doesn't have to be super precise because there's going to be tons of motion blur on it. And any imperfections will just kind of, you know, be filtered out by blur. Blur is a very good thing when you want to hide stuff. Hey look, it's Sasquatch. Hide him. Blurry. See, that's why he's always so blurry, you know? Other guys like Dracula, they're blurry too. Except when they look at mirrors, then they're not so blurry because they're, you know, invisible. Vampire opacity is zero with a mirror. Obviously, if you look at them straight on, then they would sparkle. Please God, tell me you're not Twilight fans. I'm just doing this to kill time, honestly. I'm just chatting, chatting you up. I would normally chat you up. 
But I have, a, I have a girlfriend. And it's Valentine's Day. Uh, but she lives in another state currently. I'm actually going to go home to see her in a little bit. Like tomorrow. Which is uh, when I'll hopefully be filming some other cool stuff with... Uh, <laughs> with uh, my, my friends who are in these previous two video series here. Uh, Matt and Spencer, if you saw our behind the scenes video. Yeah, so we'll, I'll try to see if I can film something of a follow up for this video and then maybe some other sort of irrelevant video. We'll see. And hopefully I'll get my girlfriend involved on that one. Should be cool. Anyway, we have our freeze frame here. Bam. So, Let's just go back a few frames in. If you hold down Alt, left bracket, you will cut it out of existence anytime before that point. And that's important for here. Let's go ahead and put this on the top layer and let's name these. This one I will name Flying Actor. An actor or an actor, if you will. Hit enter on the keypad again and we'll call this, uh, I don't know, Smashed Act. <laughs> it's like he's drunk. That's funny. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, but yes, smashed up against the wall. You know, no big deal. So if we zoom in here by hitting the plus sign right next to the backspace key on your keyboard, you can you know zoom in and out, or you can use this little slider here. Basically, we're gonna just overlap this by one frame, so we can you know line it up here. So I'm gonna line it up to something like right there, and Hit P on the keyboard to bring up your position, and hit P. And now you're going to just trim this back to where it was so it's invisible, but you know that he's basically in the right spot. You want him to have it a little lower like this because his head's going to whip backwards. Trim back and go up like one, two, three, four, maybe five frames. And now you're just going to drag your actor off the side of the screen. Oh, <laughs> that's important to not do. Control Z to undo that. You don't want to move your mask at all, so let's go ahead and see don't do it. Yep, I did it again. You have to be kind of zoomed in for this. I made my masks kind of dense. Don't usually want to do that, but I'm not going to be editing the masks at all. So, you see these little points here are basically the keyframes. One, two, three. That should be good. So, yeah. And you may be asking, why did you go five frames out and make two frames off the screen? Well, the point is that you want to have it have some speed to it. If I just Put it out here, then you know, no big deal. There's not very much speed to it, but doing it that way, I can add some motion blur. So if I hit the motion blur icon and turn on on the composition, bam, you see, blurry. And this is important. Sometimes it will look terrible if you do this. And I'll make an example of that. I'll make this 360. This is kind of the default. Uh, if you turn on motion blur, all of a sudden he disappears. Why is that? It's because you have there's basically uh, too much motion blur. And to do that, you go up, oh, well, I'll go through this step by step. Go to composition, then go down to composition settings. And this will basically bring up the settings for your composition. You can see my resolution here, 1920 by 1080, my frame rate. But if you go to your advanced tab here, you can go down to your motion blur. And the shutter angle is what affects how much motion blur there is. So if I, say, make this basically the higher the number, uh, the more motion blur, the less the number. If I put it to zero here, there's no motion blur. If I put it at, you know, 800, yeah, it's ridiculous. I guess it maxes out at 720. But let's see, let's try 180. Yeah, still a little too blurry. Let's try 90. Uh, yeah, that's still too blurry. That's just like, you, you want to match it to your footage. You don't want to make it overly obvious that it's blurred out. 45, yeah, that, that looks about right. That's, uh, uh, 35, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with 35. So a 35 degree shutter angle, and that'll basically make it so that it's blurred out that much with that amount of movement. So voila, that's pretty much the start of our effect here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to minimize that part. We're going to make this part of the clip faster, because if, if I was to preview this, uh, let's go ahead and set our endpoint and outpoint. Hit B on the keyboard, and then N on the keyboard to set your working part. Here, I can zoom in for you. Wow, that's actually a little bit too fast moving. I'll go back to my position. 
I didn't like that. That was way too fast. And I will simply just move it out a couple frames. Let's try that again. Now it's too slow. <laughs> so I'll just move it in one frame and call it good. Yeah, just one frame. OK, so why is this a big deal? Our landing is still slow. And why is that? It's because we have to speed it up a little. So if you go to Enable Timer Mapping, and then, well, first let's go ahead and disable that layer and drag this out a little bit. Well, I thought I disabled it. So it makes contact about right here. So one, two, three, four, four frames. So set a keyframe right here. Like I said, I gotta get a new mouse. I've worn out the pointer on it. So if you hit page up on the keyboard, one, two, three, four, and then make another keyframe. You can drag this forward a couple frames, one, two, and then trim this up. So now, if you move this over, it's like, bam. Just kind of shows more of the impact as opposed to just smacking into the wall of nothing. Get more of the animation for it. And to speed up falling down a little bit, you want to just kind of go to the end here and then add one more keyframe and then drag it in. You don't want to drag it in much because if they can notice that it's speed uh, that you have made the speed quicker, it'll look bad. You've not done your job. You want to make it subtle enough that they don't notice that it's quicker. And you do that by just, just doing a little bit. Let's uh, see how that looks. I can make it a little bit quicker. Let's try that. All right, I like that. Okay, now one last thing to do is that you'll notice, especially up here in the background, how it changes like that. And that's because this layer is popping into existence here. If I turn it off, you have the clean plate. So how do we fix this? Let's essentially just isolate this part, because this is the only part of the scene that's actually used. So if you go to your mask and just you know, draw an outline about where you're going to be you know, standing in the scene, hit V to go back to your pointer. Then other things like the shadows, the tones, the colors, uh, the trees, nothing else changes because it's, it's constantly the clean plate. The only part that's used is this part right here. And then you'll notice that uh, it doesn't match up right. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's bring out our levels. Let's double click on levels. And let's turn off our mask here so we can see accurately what, what it is we're changing. We're just going to try to match this up to this. This is a little bit darker than this, so let's try to lighten it up. Just a little bit. Something, something along the lines of that. You want to try to match it as close as you can with the solid lines because then you can go and hit F on your keyboard to bring up your uh, mask properties and then you can feather it and I would feather it like a hundred and that diminishes the line altogether. It gives you a bit of a gradient that lets you get away with that kind of change. So if you look closely, especially in like right here, you'll see the change in tone because it's unless you're a professional at this, you're not going to be able to match it up perfectly, which is why you get to feather it. Okay, really quick before I go any further, I uh, completely and utterly forgot to do the shadow in the original tutorial, so I had to go back and re-record it, and I just inserted it into the tutorial here. So I'll just do that here quickly. It's actually really easy. All I do is uh, basically just take this footage here, I duplicate it, so Control D, and uh, this bottom one I'm going to use, say just right here, add a keyframe, because we're going to move the entire thing down. So hit, uh, click on the position, which will select all three uh, little keyframes here, or you can just click and you know select them that way. And then you can just drag all the keyframes at once, because if you just just moved it like, uh, like this, you'll actually move the keyframe. Um, so make sure you have all your keyframes selected when you move it. And you're just going to kind of move it slightly below, and then you're going to just squeeze it. You could make it a 3D layer and actually try to make uh, the perspective match, um, but it's only on the frame, only on the screen for like four frames. It's not worth it. Uh, so 
Then I just, I don't know, position them somewhere about right there. I drop the tint effect on it and I will tint, or rather I will map all the whites to the blacks so that it is now, you know, like a shadow. So uh, next thing to do is hit T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity and put this down to like 30%, maybe 35. Put it to overlay. Yeah, so that's pretty much all you have to do for the shadow. Kind of see it matches up like that. Not perfectly, but it's good enough. All right, so for the rest of this tutorial, uh, just keep in mind that there is no shadow and this is how you actually make the shadow. So if you do this here and you pretty much don't touch it for the rest of the thing, you're good. <laughs> All right. All right, so now we have our basic footage, right? This is, I mean, our basic effect. As you can see, our actor flies on and falls down. That was, that's the main part of the effect. It's just that the rest of the effect takes so much more time. So for that, what we're going to do is you're going to take your footage, this footage here. I keep double clicking on it because my mouse is basically dying. I've worn out the pointer on it, so it automatically double clicks a lot of the time. Um, so apologies for all that. You may have noticed up until now. Take your, like that, just, ugh, ugh, click, yay. All right, so you're going to take your actor and hit Control D to duplicate, or you can go up to Composition or Edit, go up to Edit, and then Duplicate. So now you have two copies of your footage, and why is that? It's because you're going to take this top footage and you're going to cut it down. You're going to roto out your body, just like, just like I did for uh, my mask here. If I could turn on the mask. Basically, well, if I turn off motion blur, you'll see. You'll see that uh, I, you know, I used a mask to crop them out, but this gets really annoying when you're having to go through frame by frame and then hands are jutting out, hands are disappearing. So for this, we're going to use the roto brush. Let's go ahead and turn our. And to do that, we're going to click on this new Roto Brush feature here as of CS5, which has been out a little while now. Um, if you don't have CS5, uh, apologies, because this is kind of a CS5 only feature. If you don't have CS5, get it. It's, it's amazing. It's pure glory. So go ahead and click on the Roto Brush. Make sure you have the right layer selected, and then double click on it. And this will open up another viewing thing. And you can turn off your mask if you want, if it's distracting, but I'm going to leave it on. So, okay, I'll give you a quick rundown of what the roto brush is. Basically, it's a paintbrush. It's, it's, a, it's like uh, the selection tool in Photoshop, essentially. You have the screen, little pointer, and if you hold down the Alt key, you have a red pointer. And essentially, green is good. Don't glitch out. Okay, green is good. Red is bad. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So if you... Uh, our rotoing, if you hold down control also and click and drag, you can change your brush size. Yeah. So you can get finer details like this arm here. I'll go to the arm. Maybe get some fingers in there. But uh, the shadow part right here, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to start from the pink line and then go to another part of the pink line. Oh, and now it did a little bit too much and you just kind of fix it until it kind of finds your line. And I will kind of get some of the legs in there. But I know that most of the effects are going to be behind my head and torso, not so much my legs, so I don't have to really focus on my legs. Just kind of get that. Oh, too much there. Sweet. Maybe a little finer on my hand, a little bit on my nose. All right, now that's the basic effect of the roto brush. If I go over here, I'm going to set my smoothness up to say something like 3.5, and it just kind of makes it less jaggedy on you. And then we can worry about the feather and choke later. Actually, go ahead and just set it to, I think a good feather amount is about 50%, unless it's, you want it to be super rough. And no need to choke it just yet. All right, so. Now what you need to do is you have to go through frame by frame and make sure that it looks all right. So if I go frame down, actually I'm already falling. I'm going to go back a few frames. See if we uh, make 
this, zoom in on this, this, uh, this bar you see here, this is your base frame essentially, if I zoom out a little. All these, I don't know if you can see it, but there's these green, this green bar here, these are essentially rendered frames that are propagated outwards from this base frame. So you have this base frame, go out a few, and then you got these green. The thing is, is that although it does kind of do a decent job tracking, it doesn't do a very good job. So you can see my hand is not being tracked from here on out. So if I go here, I gotta make sure my hand is tracked. Let me get my fingers in. Then go up another frame, get my fingers back. Oop, don't want that much. Let's get rid of that. Go another. And you're basically just teaching Roto Brush where you want your lines. That was way too much, for instance. You don't want that. Kind of get rid of that. Remember, you can always just kind of do brush, uh, ride wide brush strokes and tell it, you know, what you want it to have. Get some fingers in there. Get rid of a little bit of that. All right, so I'm basically going to go through and frame by frame cut out oh, uh, this whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this process here. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and basically gone through and with every single frame made sure that those pink lines lined up with the outlines of my body here, um, and like I said here, I didn't have to worry about uh, the legs too much since they don't have to cover anything. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to render this out as an actual clip. So if I go back and I unmaximize that. What I have here is a clip. If I just get rid of the bottom layer, as you can see my, my legs disappear, but so do the shadows and whatnots. But if I say I uh, put a shape, just some random shape, I could put it underneath my actor here, you know, voila. So now as I fall down, it's like it's actually there behind me. That's the beauty of that. The only issue is that Rotobrush will use a fair amount of uh, memory. And it's if you change anything to it, it'll have to re-render basically what you're doing. So a good form of practice is to just go ahead and render out what you just did with an alpha layer. So if I take this and I, if I go uh, alpha layer and I solo it, it's the only thing on the screen, and I will go up to Composition and Add to Render Queue. So here what you're going to do is you're going to go to your output module and change it to a QuickTime video down here, and change it your uh, video codec to a PNG. So then, what uh, under your Video Output tab, under Channels, go to RGB plus Alpha and that will basically allow you to preserve the transparency. If you didn't do that, it would essentially just be black. It would be black like this, and you wouldn't be able to get rid of it without you know, basically trying to key out the black, which is not, not the best way of doing it. So if you just go ahead and preserve the alpha layer, it'll leave it as a transparency. So if we go back to our render thing and just render it out, I'll leave it. I already have another one for a previous. I hit render, and this should actually render pretty quickly. You know, you're watching it render there. <laughs> and this is with uh, screen capture software going on. So it's, it's, I prefer doing it this way because then you don't have to worry about it. It doesn't use up memory. <sighs> it is 6.20 in the morning on Tuesday. I stayed up all night doing this. And I will continue to stay up for the rest of the day. Oh, no. What is that? We don't want that. Fortunately, we won't be using enough of the actual footage for that to ever come in. So let's go back. And we can bring in our footage. Bring in our footage. Cool. All right, so now that we have, no, we don't want clean plate too. Why did I make clean plate? Is this it? OK, well, that's what I wanted, so clean 
plate two, I'm going to rename that as a body alpha. Wow, that was certainly misleading for a lot of you probably. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. In fact, one cool thing that you can do is you can you see this little guy smiling here. What you can do is you can clip this and hide it. So essentially it's still there, it's just not you know cluttering your workspace here. So if you just hit the hide button and then turn on the hiding, I, I don't even know the name for it, it's just something like hiding, <laughs> uh, it gets rid of it. So now this is all you really need. You have your mat, essentially. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting some blood in here. This is the fun part of the effect. So let's see, I think I use blood splat one. It's a, it's a pretty gnarly and brutal effect. Scale it down a little bit. Uh, let's time it up. Whoa. 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 It has cr Oh, you're kidding me, son of a... Well, that's a fun part about After Effects is that it likes to crash every now and then. And fortunately, it crashed on me during a tutorial. That's great. Um, I only lost a little bit. It allows you to pretty much save. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Well, uh, let's rename this. I forget what I named it. Alpha body or something like that? I don't even know. Bring it out. I'm going to go ahead and um, hide that other feature. Make sure to turn it off first. That's kind of a big part of it. Hide it so now we can add in the blood like I had it going. Blood splat one. Okay, I'm going to hit save <laughs> and align it up. So, bam, and that beginning part is a little too slow for me, so I'm going to go time, enable timer mapping, hit a frame, and just bring the first one in a bit. So it just seems more, bam, really quick, maybe even a little bit more. All right, so... Let's get that into place. Maybe a little bit too much. Shrink it down a bit uh, and put it underneath your body. So, all right, that's basically it. Let's shrink it down even more, perhaps. Hold down the shift key, it'll scale properly. And put this right behind your head. <laughs> Fortunately, it's also the same angle. You'll notice the uh, the whatever surface the blood was on is almost the exact same angle as our wall here. So it actually lines up pretty nicely for that. Bam. Yeah, still a little still a little large. Shrink it down. I'm gonna line it up with the head. Something like that. Bam. Cool. So then we're gonna take out our other blood splat, which is blood splat 5, and let's preview that. How does that look? Off to the left, or rather off to the right like that. So let's go ahead and change our anchor point. If you hit the Y key, then you can change the center point, and this is, a basically, this is basically where if you rotate it, uh, it'll rotate around that anchor point. So if I change it to another place and then try to rotate it again, it'll rotate wherever that is. Undo. Uh, let's go ahead and put it here. This is basically the middle of the effect. Um, and let's rotate it. Okay, that's still kind of monstrously huge too, so let's shrink that down. And just kind of put the center here, maybe a little lower. And now we're going to duplicate this layer. Duplicate. And we're going to change the scale. We're going to flip it horizontally. So if you hit S on the keyboard to bring up your scale, see this little link here? This basically makes it so that it scales evenly whenever you move that. Hit Control Z to go back. But if you let go of that, then you could do it however you want. So I'm going to see it says 32.9. I'm going to make it negative 32.9. That was my ankle cracking. And why is that significant? So now we basically have a mirror image of it. 
and put in the same spot. Let's go ahead and rotate it the other way. Yeah, look at that. So now we get this kind of cool splattering outwards kind of uh, looking effect. Maybe a little higher. Maybe this one a little down more. Maybe uh, this one rotate ever so slightly. Yeah, fine tuning, you know. And go ahead and drag these underneath your actor. Look at that, see? And th this is this is pretty much enough of the effect. If you don't want to have to deal with uh, the smearing part of it, and this is this is plenty. Uh, one last thing I like to do is I like to add this texture. You know, if you search uh, blood splatter on Google Images, this is like one of the first results you get. Um, I have no idea who made it, what it is. But if you make it a 3D layer by hitting this little switch here, you can then rotate it. So you can rotate it so that it kind of fits the perspective of the wall. And then maybe bring it in. Oops. Squeeze it a little bit. Change the scale down. And set the transfer mode to multiply. And this will get rid of the white. And there you go, you can just put it there. Make sure to put it under your alpha body. It just kind of gives more body to the effect. Oh yeah, and say right there, cut it in. So Alt, left bracket on that layer to cut it to that point. You can see it still is kind of bright. If we go ahead and go to levels and double click on that, we can darken it up a bit. Or actually, you know what? I have a better idea. Delete that. Let's go to hue and saturation. Let's desaturate it. So hue. Double click on hue and saturation and let's desaturate it a little. Let's say 30, negative 30. Nice even number. So bam. Actually we could probably cut it one more frame away. Yeah, there we go. Get more of the splatter. Maybe even more than that. Yeah, that looks good. You can change the scaling on it too if you want. But that's essentially that. This is pretty much your main effect. The last thing to do is just the, the smear. And we'll go over that in a moment. I'll show you this. All right, looks pretty good so far. Hope you guys are following along pretty nicely. Uh, one thing that we can do is go ahead and add a little bit of a fast blur. It's a, Essentially, this is just a quick rendering blur. It's not as great quality as, say, the, like the Gaussian blur, but only in the fine details. For the most part, it is pretty much the same, and it renders so much quicker. So let's go ahead and apply this. Oh, I didn't mean to apply it to the alpha body. Let's go ahead and select our blood footage here and double click on Fast Blur. And if you do this, then you could apply it to all the layers at once. You see how they all, that's if you double click. So it's just a tad bit too sharp in my opinion. I want it to match the footage a little bit more. So I think I gave it like a blur of one. Maybe two. Now let's go back to one. Just You want it to be subtle. You don't want it to be overly sharp, but you don't want it to be obviously blurred out. So now the last thing to do is essentially make the smear that comes across. So to make this, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go up to composition, actually layer. We'll go to layer, new, and a new solid. Or you can hit control Y and make it comp size, black, yeah, sure, that's good. And then we're going to go over here to our effects and presets panel and type turbulent, dis turbulent noise. This brings you know this cloudy looking effect. And we'll go over to our fractal type and we'll go down to, I think we won't go uh, threads. Is that what I do? Yeah, threads. And then we go to spline. And I know this doesn't really look like anything yet, but if we took our contrast up to like say 360, super bright and take this down to like say negative 120, 
get some nice contrast in there. That's actually a little bit way too much. Let's take our complexity up to 10. And maybe wrap on black. There we go. That's what we wanted. Let's put this back to 120, negative 120. All right. So this gives us a texture. All we wanted was a texture, and we're going to basically crush this. We want to make this really stringy in one direction. So we'll just stretch it out. And you can play around with uh, you know, changing the evolution of it. I think I put it at like 40 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to make a mask. If you go ahead and turn that off, you can see where you fall, for instance. And with your layer selected, go ahead and hit the pen tool and just kind of make a little mask down to where your body kind of lays down. Turn this back on, put underneath your alpha body. Maybe move that more this way, maybe this more this way. Don't move the whole thing. Remember, you're just moving the, oh, the mask points. Go down a little bit more. The idea here is you're just kind of outlining where you think your shoulders or whatever you want to be super bloody comes in contact with the wall. In my case, it's just kind of the my back, my back region, the back region region. Cool. So now that we basically have that, we have to make another mask that will reveal it. So with this selected. Just kind of cut through. It doesn't have to be super precise, but just kind of extend it outwards on the sides. So now we have to hit MM on the keyboard to bring up your mask control properties. We don't want it, all this here. We want it to basically be subtracting. But we still have this here. We want it to basically only show in the region that these two masks intercept. So set to subtract and inverted. Inverted. And now let's go ahead and hit a keyframe for the mask properties, or the mask path rather. Go down. And you're just going to slowly move the mask as the uh, actor's body kind of goes down. Go down a little bit more. Just kind of go every few frames, add a keyframe. I'm hitting page down key on the keyboard. Fantastic. So now what you should get is <laughs> this black and white smear, which is obviously not what you want. So one thing you can do is hit control Y again to make a new solid. And this time, go ahead and sample the color of your blood. How about this nice little rich red color here. Yeah, there we go. Make comp size, and then yes. Go ahead and drag this so that it's underneath the black solid you just made. Let's go ahead and name this. We'll call this uh, Smear Luma Mat, because you'll see in a moment, and we'll talk, we'll call this uh, Red Smear. So if we go ahead and minimize this. Uh, under the track mat, for your red smear, hit none, and then go to luma mat. And voila, it'll turn off the smear mats, and basically anything that is uh, either black or white, I can't remember what. Anything that is white is gonna show up on the red thing. So, we're almost there. We kind of got the majority of our effect down. Oops. Next thing we're going to do is essentially just kind of, first let's set this to multiply. 
your red layer to multiply. Actually, you know what? It's dark enough. You don't really need to. Just go to normal. Uh, duplicate these two layers. So hit Control, click that one, and then Control D to duplicate. So now you have these two layers here. And what's the big deal about that? Well, this bottom one, for instance, if you go to the, the Luma mat, and then you can go to your effects and presets panel and type in fast blur, what you can do is blur this out. So you kind of get like this smudged sort of look on the bottom layer. As you can see, it just kind of, it feels like more of a seeping in kind of feeling to it. Let's put it this like 70. Um, turn off and on, you can see. And this top one here, let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, hit F on your keyboard to bring in, up your feather. And the second feather here, actually no, your first one, the main one containing your path here. Uh, you're going to feather this out to something like maybe 30. And voila. You can even do it on your second one too. Uh, F. So that kind of just makes it thinner. It's already pretty blurred out as it is. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at zero. That's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and preview this. It's rendering. There we go. Well, that's pretty much it. You can change the, the color a little bit of this. I think it's a little too dark. I need to brighten it up a little bit maybe. Make it a little bit more dense. I can go to our our smear here and add a levels adjustment. Add our levels. There we go. Because now you're changing basically the intensity of this track mat here. As you can see, you can change how much whiteness, enter of whiteness. Yes, I'm not Toby. Uh, yes, let's turn that off. So if you just kind of make this a little bit more intense, maybe make it a little bit more red. Well, unfortunately, you can only do that on this one. There we go. Something like that. Even though the smears are kind of in the wrong direction, you kind of want them to go along your path, but it, it gets you by. This is essentially the main effect. And this is something I don't really like. See this image here that uh, I added some blood to? I'm going to blur that out a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to give it a nice even blur of 5. It's just way too sharp for me. Oh, you see that right there? We want to make sure that we have all this trimmed up. So say, select all of these, and then Alt left bracket. So now you can see that all of these are pretty much lined up with the moment you need them. And there you have it. This is, this is the effect. I'm going to do one or two more things to show you how I got to my final effect. If I hold down Control, Alt, and then hit Y, I can make an adjustment layer. And if I type in curves and double click on curves, I can color correct it a little bit. Let's go ahead and maximize our viewing area. If we uh, just kind of darken the darks a little bit, let's add some contrast and brighten it up. Oh yeah, look at that. Maybe add a little bit of a saturation hue and saturation. Maybe saturated just ever so slightly, like eight. And if we add another one of these, Control Alt Y, and go up to our little square here, our rectangle tool, and make it a an ellipse tool. If you double click on that, it automatically makes a circle around the entire layer. And this is on our adjustment layer, so we want to put this to subtract. We're gonna make a vignette. We're gonna go to our curves again. Double click. Double click. Really? Oh. Double click. All right. So if you bring this down and turn off our mask, you'll see where it is. So if we go to our mask properties and then feather this out, we're making a vignette here. So if I, I'm going to set this to like 300. And then darken this a little bit more. Voila. Look at that color correction I just did. just in a couple steps. So
There's what we've been working with this whole time, and here's our final product. Go ahead and hit render. It's rendering out, bam, hit the ground. And there you go, you just splattered someone into a wall. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to post these on a weekly basis. I'm just gonna try to get some sort of tutorial out like this one out every single Tuesday. And I'm probably gonna regret saying that because it's gonna mean a lot of stress on my part, but you know, screw it. Uh, <laughs> all right, um, I also tend to talk a lot about which effect I plan on doing on my Facebook page and Twitter, so if you are interested in that sort of thing, go ahead and follow or like my stuff, my Facebook, like my Facebook page, follow my Twitter if you want to know what I'm going to be making. You know, if not, whatevs, don't really mind. Uh, but I do, I do talk a lot. I will post stuff online about this kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you next week and have a happy Valentine's Day. Go, go kiss a girl. That's a good thing to do.